Welcome to the tutorial Adding Color. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint the cleaned up versions of your colored rabbit. So here in the rabbit clean layer I have the front three quarter and profile views of my rabbit fully inked um, but I'm going to keep a copy of this ink layer in case I ever need to go back to it. So I'm not going to paint directly on this layer, I'm going to make a duplicate and rename that duplicate rabbit color and color on this layer, which is a duplicate of my clean layer. So the fastest way to paint is to select a color from the, the color palette here. These are some of the default colors in the default color palette. And then to go to the Tools toolbar and select the Paint tool, or use the keyboard shortcut Option K um, on Mac or Alt K in Windows, and then just to click in a closed zone. So here the zone is fully closed. If it doesn't paint generally, it's because there's a small gap somewhere that you can't see, but otherwise you should be able to just click in a zone and paint. So let's undo that. So when I was working on the uh, dojo, I just added some colors to the default palette. But something that's probably more efficient to do is to create your own palette, which I did here, the rabbit palette, and add colors to a specific palette that belongs to a specific character. And the way I did that is I just went to the menu here at the top and went to palette, new, it brought up this dialog box, I typed in rabbit and OK, and then added colors to this palette here. So the way you can add swatches to a palette is that you can click on a swatch that is closest to the, the new color that you would like to create and you can click on the add color button here just like that and a copy will be made of the color that was previously selected. Now if you want to change this color you can double click on the swatch and it brings up the color picker window and in the window you can change the color as well as change the name of the swatch. I'm going to make, call this interior mouth because it's going to be the color of the inside of the rabbit's mouth. And it's always good to name your swatches because otherwise you'll have, you might forget which swatch belongs to what part of the rabbit. There'll be several versions of pinks and reds so you know it's good to name it right away. Then I could close this color picker window and my swatch would remain in my color palette or I could press on the add color button again and create a new swatch right away. So I could change the color here and then add a new swatch and then change the color here you know and add a new swatch and keep going like that until I made all the colors that I wanted. But uh, I'm just gonna go I'm gonna delete these here and you can do that by clicking on the delete color button. So we're going to keep the internal mouth. Um, then if we want to create a gradient swatch, we can do the same thing. Click on the Add Color button, double click. And here, we're going to actually make this the tongue, so I'll rename it right away. I can decide to make this a gradient instead of a solid. The solid is the default, but you can make this a gradient. And in the gradient, you can add as many of these markers as you want. The minimum is two for a gradient. So if I change the marker here in the first that's selected by the square, um, that's how you can tell this one's selected. If I click here, it'll change the color of this marker here, like that. You can also add more markers like that just by clicking um, so that you can get, uh, you know, usually when you do a metal, it's often good to do these so you can get a range of of colors and then if you want to get rid of these extra markers you can just click on them and, and pull them away and they disappear like that. So for the tongue maybe I'll make it you know, kind of like that. So that's the gradient. You can also change the alpha here as well so if you turn this down it'll be semi-transparent um, but on a gradient because this marker is selected it's only making this color uh, semi-transparent. If you then click on the other marker you'll see it's still at full opacity. So you'd have to change it for this marker as well. But in this case, actually, I'd like to make them both opaque. So I'm going to drag this back to 255 for both. So the next thing I'd like to show you how to do is to add a textured swatch. And you do this by clicking on the third button in a row here, which is the Add Texture button. It's the plus sign, little t. 
And instead of the color picker window opening up, the low texture file browser window, window opens up and allows you to search on your computer um, for either a TGA a targa file or a PSD file. So I'm going to select this one here, Japanese print, and click open. Just like your gradient or your solid swatch textures, you can always double click on the name to rename uh, your swatch. And I'm going to name it Japanese print. And then I'm going to select my textured print and with the paint tool still selected, I'm going to fill in the different zones of my karate rabbit's robe, like that. And I'm also going to do that actually for the tongue. Uh, for now, we'll use it to fill in the ears. Because what I'd like to show you as I zoom in is that although you use this texture um, without making any changes to fill in these zones, you'll notice they filled in at different sizes. So a way to correct this, as well as be able to adjust the orientation or scale of your texture, is by going under the Contour Editor tool and by selecting the Edit Gradient Texture tool. And with this tool, if you click in a zone that's been painted with either a texture or a gradient, you have the ability to change the orientation, um, the scale, the position, whatever you want of the texture. So let's say I like it like, like that. Um, and then if you want to copy what's in this specific zone, you like the orientation, the size, all of that, then what you could do is click on this, right click, and select copy drawing object, and then click in another zone that was painted with the exact same texture, and say paste drawing object. And now, as you'll see, these are the same size, and you can do that throughout. So paste drawing object. the last one at the top here. And what the, the software is essentially doing is it's taking the bitmap texture fill of this zone and basically extending it into this zone and this zone and this zone and all the adjacent zones so that it takes it's almost like one sheet of paper now sits behind each instead of being mapped relative to the size of the zone. And the same thing goes for the gradient here. If you click on it with the um, edit gradient texture tool selected, you have the option of changing the, the orientation of the gradient, which side is more pale, which side is more saturated. Um, you can extend it to make you know, the, the paleness last longer, or a certain part of the, um, the gradient extend farther out. Um, and you also have the same ability to copy this and then paste it into the ear beside. So here it's very pale and this paleness is extending over to the paleness over here. And if I double click back on the tongue swatch and change it from linear to radial um, and then click in the ear again you'll see that the um, edit to gradient texture tool changes into a circle because this is now radial gradient and you have to be able to adjust the gradient in terms of a radius and a circle and the properties of a circle like that. So the last thing I'd like to show you is how to select the current color of a tool. So right now in your color palette your th three tools, the brush, the pencil, and the paint tool are all linked in color. If you select one swatch um, the color of all three of these tools get changed um, automatically. But if you decide that you'd like to change these independently, you only need to click on the this button here, unlink three colors. And so now these three colors can be selected separately. So this we can make black, the pencil tool we can make say blue, and the paint tool let's make yellow. And what this is useful for is that you don't have to jump back and forth between the different tools or keyboard shortcuts and the color palette. You can paint uh, or draw something using a, a central vector line tool, then fill it with the paint tool, and then say draw something with, you know, the paintbrush tool. So, you know, without having to go back and forth, um, which is quite useful. 
So that's it for the tutorial um, adding colors. Stay tuned for the next tutorial painting using the paint tool.